Hello and welcome to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. Long time no see, but we are back. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much to talk about. I'm not even sure we have enough time to cover everything uh, while we were away. Thieves broke into former Prime Minister Raila Odinga's home and made away with geese. <laughs> <laughs> so sad that even after the handshake, Baba may be Watena. <laughs> I know most of you don't understand how comes geese are so important that they made news at Ibata Zababa Zimepotea. You people do not understand the importance of yeah, Izobata. Watch this clip carefully and you'll notice the close relationship between Baba and Izobata Zaki. <laughs> Now you know my little talkers, isn't you? <laughs> you understand the importance of Mabata. I can't confirm why they stole the geese in the first place, but Kama, they were stolen to be eaten, then it's safe to say that Baba's goose is cooked. Now, still on cooking, some of the new county uh, proposed budgets are suggesting very ridiculous ideas of tax collection. Among them is the proposed taxation of Mutura vendors. As your Mutura mekuwa kitu NYS by reducing the size of Mutura per unit cost every year, now <laughs> Alipangi tax. <laughs> yes. Very soon, many people are not going to afford Mutura. We may even be forced to start hiring Mutura badala ya kukatiwe ya pesa wenye ukonayo. Where customer malizia yo Mutura kuna wegine wana igoja. <laughs> mutura ni kuigiza kwa supu, unanyonya kidogo, unarudisha. <laughs> See, the saddest thing about uh, these ridiculous ways of collecting money in the counties is that they also spend it in ridiculous ways. You charge people two shillings to slaughter a chicken or a rabbit only to use that money for something even more ridiculous. You just do the math. Embu County recently set aside a secret budget of 11 million shillings to take the county MCAs to the gym. How many rabbits would have to die for one MCA to be physically fit? <laughs> In other news, uh, Zambian MPs were in Kenya to learn how to fight corruption. <laughs> Imagine that. And the delegation they sent here must have been a team of very quick learners because on getting back, they have already formed their NYS. <laughs> That's progress. They have actually even moved up nine position, positions in the World Corruption Index. That means that these benchmarking programs are working. In 2015, uh, Kenyan MPs uh, were on the spot for traveling to Asia to learn how to cook spaghetti and other foods. Three years later, we are seeing the results. Nakuru people have just discovered that Kumbe Parker and Isungura Ikuli Mboga. So much has happened. Your story ya Makiru Mia ata sita ongelea, itanipandisha sukari. Now. And now to the main subject of our show tonight, the lifestyle audit, a concept whose definition in the simplest terms is we minding your business. He nyumba, pesa, he mushara ndiyo, he, he ulinunua na mnagani. He ulinunua na mnagani. He gari ambayo unapeleka na usijaribu kuweka kwa jina ya bibi yako wao, mtoto yako, tutajua ni yako, ulitoa wapi. You must explain. Exactly. Hu jamaa anafieka chai na chapati breakfast kila siku. Akule mutura jioni alafa ingironga irashawa na taxi. <laughs> Tuambi pesa unatoa wapi kama sio Illuminati. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I, I don't understand why politicians are, are, are afraid of the lifestyle audit, yet we ordinary Kenyans have been doing it on each other for like forever. Na tuko tu. Ati ebu da hapa mnalipa rent pesa ngapi? Ati 15,000. Ebu siki ati jemu anaishi kwa keja 15,000 na anafanya kazi ya AIM Global. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, several, several, several debates have been drawn uh, from the lifestyle audit conversation, and it's very clear that this subject has divided the ruling Jubilee coalition into two camps. Listen and watch carefully as uh, the Cherangani MP Joshua Kutuni warns the party members of the consequences of, of, of opposing the lifestyle audit, and then the consequences literally happened when he was talking. Mimi nataka kuomba sisi wote ambao ni wafuasi wa naibu wa rais. Tukiendelea hivyo tutatorokwa na tutatengwa na wakenya wengine. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> see, see the lifestyle audit conversation was fueled uh, by the hashtag uh, we know your salary. 
And in their defense, some politicians mentioned have said that uh, no one ever got rich by depending on their salary, claiming that most of their wealth has been gotten through side hustles. Lucky for them, some professionals out there cannot afford to have side, side hustles. Imagine a surgeon with a side hustle. Eh, kijana nataka unishikie hizi figo zako. Kuna jama wangu wa ndudhi ameshikwa tena. <laughs> Na nilimwambia asiingie town. <laughs> Na umeekelea figo chini tena kijana kwa nini mzito? <laughs> See different people have different reasons for supporting the lifestyle audit. He has got to secretary generals Francis Atwell's reason. Wengine wamesaliwa juzi. Hawa viongozi. Wengine wamesaliwa tukifanya kazi. Kama mtu alizaliwa miaka ya 67, 68, wengine wamesaliwa miaka ya 70. Wengine hata wamesaliwa na ni mabilionea. Ha? Wanifanya wanifanya kazi gani? Kama ni uganga watuambie ni wakanga. There you have it. But sijui watu wa mwaka 70 ni watu walizaliwa mwaka gani. So different sources claim that Kenya loses over a billion shillings per day through tax evasion and other finance malpractices. That's how rich we are. We lose a billion shillings every day. The question is, will the lifestyle audit seal these loopholes? And considering the fact that it has already been discredited and politicized. Apparently, when you undergo a lifestyle audit and you cannot explain the source of the property you own, the government takes it back so that someone who knows how to account can steal it afresh. Now, if this, if this is the case, if this is really the case, the people who need to be more worried than the politicians are sliquids. Most of them will never account for their wealth. Problem is when they get audited, as in the sliquids, they may trace the property back to the politicians. Then, <laughs> then there's the issue of how do you expect to catch a thief when you have already informed them that you are coming? Well, tunakuja kwako Friday next week, wangalia kama kuna kitu ya kuiba. Karada. That's exactly what's going on. That's why we extend this conversation to the second part of the show. And to help us break this subject down, we chose blogger Robert Alai. So see you on the other end of this video. Welcome back to the weekly edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. The subject on our show tonight is a lifestyle audit, and our guest actually is the best. You can hold me to this. Uh, he is uh, a champion of the truth, and his name is a lie. What a contrast. <laughs> <laughs> and he is arguably also one of the richest people who earn 50,000 per day at the comfort of your seat. Robert Alai, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 Kari, karibu sana kwa show yetu. Mm. E, tumekuleta juu ya story ya lifestyle audit. Ndaka kuni audit. Hapana. <laughs> <laughs> Actually mtu alituambia tukulize swali ya ku audit mara ya kwanza. Yes. Ya yeah, why you supported one team, team ya mm -hmm. Baba from the start and then uka and uh, uh, side ya the president, Kiba, yes, yes, president yes. Uhuru yes. and then sasa uko in politics you, you have to change your mind. At some point, when you see that your, your strategy is not working, you have to change your mind. Just like that? <laughs> no, you have to change your mind gradually. And oh. you explain why you change your mind. There is no way, Ada Komaombi, Raila was going to win this. <laughs> 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 so, so you it, changed your mind because, because Raila was not with I don't want to. I don't want to support a losing person. I can quote a uh, quote by Professor Haman Manyora when mm. he talked about uh, you cannot be a, be a billionaire in Kenya mm. if you are not a thief. And then still on the same, <laughs> same thought, we have, we have uh, Atwoli who just uh, said in a bite that we played that uh, some people are not as rich, as in are richer than their age. Yes. Where, where do you draw the line between, you can even give us your story, yeah, how do you, should you grow pamoja na pesa yako, una mea na pesa yako? <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think I think I think there's there's truth to that you it's very it's not that you cannot be yes. a billionaire if you're not a thief. It's very hard to be a billionaire if you're not a thief in Kenya. Because now the richest people are in government. And one of the first rules in civil service is that civil service seal place ya kutengeneza pesa. But in Kenya it is the reverse. It's the place for making money. And the other thing which Atoli is saying and which I think is wrong is that you cannot make money if you're not a certain age. 
But you know now it's the knowledge economy. People are depending on the intellectual property. In fact, it's only Kenya where people are still selling you mashamba na ma protein na manini na 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 common problems. Where were you and you were the TUSI? Yes. From when to Unasema, you got to be a bill of yard. You were in Nairobi, I was going to tell you a story. I was in Nairobi in 1999. Bill of yard. I was in Kenya bus. You were in Kenya bus? I was in Kenya bus. You were in Kenya bus. So, you know, you had to go sleep in Kenya bus. You had to go to Kenya bus. At some point, at some point, then you know went to these funny funny business colleges in that, which I, I really much appreciate second you know when floor, i see when i see these second floor, floor colleges. colleges you know you appreciate them because now is when i'm doing my degree <laughs> finishing my degree Congress. just finished and, and and the funny thing is that us who came from the village you try so hard i used to walk from majengo when i was going to college i was living in an hostel up at st john's for anybody who knows st john's hostel in in, in pumwani and i used to walk from there sometimes to Kenya School of Monetary Studies in Madare, eh, where I used to go to school. And you used to see the problem people have gone to. So, so from there, unatafta hizi kazi ndogo ndogo, unafanya kwa cyber cafe, umefanya kwa, uh, umefanya, utafta internship here and there. Badai nika cross border ya Kenya na Tanzania, kuenda Tanzania, without a passport. Okay. Yeah, waka nirudisha marambili na nilirudi. <laughs> you know, the third time nika pata passport, nika rudi huko, nika pata kazi na UN. UN. So yes, I was yes. working with the UN. I was a staffer with the UN. So from there is when my share comes up to change. And you say you come from the same village in Amigona? Come from the same, same, so same, same area, not the village per se, okay. but the same constitution, constituency in Amigona. So you're the same second. Amigona is the second person from your village to be deported. <laughs> <laughs> Tanzania. Yeah. Tanzania. Going to Tanzania to Kofanya. I was working in the UN mission in Congo, so I was going to Congo, Congo a lot. I came back to Kenya when Kenya was almost burning. At least you know you you. There's a lot of things, positive things we which we organized as a Kenyan community, which was then in the in the Congo. We were removing people from from the trouble spots. You know we we appreciate where the country is now. Yeah. It's it's been a journey, and it's been a journey for some. Of, if you audit me. Yes. I'm the same same person, you know. Ile bicycle limoja. I have to have a bicycle, by the way, well, you know, <laughs> because I limoja. because I have to come from I, I come from Canoplain. Yes. So Canoplain, we are used to bicycles. That's the only thing you are, you know you 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 are taken from Kijana to manhood with a bicycle. With a bicycle. Eh, ukundi boda boda lianza. Ile boda boda ya bicycle. Yes, yes, yes. Ile boda boda ya bicycle ina uko alafundi kanga Uganda. Yes. Ile travel level. So I think na bicycle yangu moja yo chochote ni mepata. It's through hard work, okay. pain and tears. Okay. Come on. So it's possible to make it when you work hard. Yes. Be yes. Before that bite, we cut uh, at all his bite. He actually said that he wakes up at 4 a.m. He prays more than other people pray, and they are more rich. Uh, they are richer than he is. So but he's wondering what uh, are they doing special that is special <laughs> than what he is doing. Yes. And uh, congrats, you've done well for yourself. Na hii ni yangu na wewe. Hii mm. story ya waheshimiwa. Hawajakuita huko wakakufinye huko. For some of the things you say. No but you used to be a player. I I don't think that you know you have to be very careful what you do. Whatever you do. Sasa hizi hata ukianza unaona ubora anatembea hapa town bwana. Akona bodyguard ngapi? Eh, hey. is a preacher. He's not a blogger. <laughs> but the blo bloggers, the blog, the, 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 I can defend him. Mm. The bodyguards are prayed for, so they are, they are, they, they are like live angels to protect him. Well, <laughs> yes. no, no, I was seeing even the yesterday, the day before yesterday, the cops were the ones who were encouraging people to go to his summons. You yes, know, so so, so these are preachers, and this thing is happening. You know, even whatever you do, whatever small, slay queens, what kind of bodyguards go to Shinda, man? Do you have a bodyguard yourself? Why should I have? Why should I have a body? Some of the things if you, you are, if you allow somebody to your life into your life, that's the first point of security breach. If you walk alone, nobody will know anything about you. Really? <laughs> so yes. 
You don't even hide. Do you know that John F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy was killed as president, surrounded by hundreds of bodyguards. If somebody wants to kill you, they'll just kill you. Mushai was killed in town in front of a CCTV camera. Up to now, to Jaona, you CCTV. Okay. So, you know, people are walking around with guns. They think that guns is security. Me, I lived my life in police lines, surrounded seeing those guys hide their guns in, 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 in boxes. Yeah. It is not safety. <laughs> Gun is not safety. So you just live your life? You just live your life. Just be free. Just be happy. Just where, where do you get the sources? <laughs> Who are your sources? No, don't mention them. <laughs> don't but mention. how connected are you? Because uh, how did you even get a recording of uh, some senior politicians plotting how to kill you? You know, if you're a media house, and what you don't do is that you don't share your easiest contact. Kama watu natumia WhatsApp, kuwa kwa WhatsApp. Alafu wambia watu wakutumie. Kenyans have stories, by the way. That's in fact, in fact if, if the president wants to tackle corruption, I get to number your WhatsApp. I get to number your WhatsApp. What would have to me a story, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would have to me a lifestyle audit? He will not, he will not go eh, to any bank, to any office to get okay. audit. What you'll just need is just get the lifestyle. The, 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 email address. the, the portal, yeah, your yes. corruption. Yes. I don't know what happened. But you know, it was it got oh. lost through corruption. <laughs> 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 you also got in trouble for sharing the president's number in public. That yes. was his real number. That was his real number. Yes, you know, I think he's still using the same number. You it is the same number. Yes, I think he, what he did is that I didn't share it first. You remember when Raila came back from Boston? Yes. Right, president told him, "I've not changed my number." Back at the number, I got podium zero seven two two. <laughs> the president shared his own number. When I share, I reshared it. I retweeted the number. Nikashikwa and Dani said, "Lakini ni kaku, ni kaku ya bade ya lewa kwamba hey boss, he likuwa mini li share. Unajua, it's not the president who had the problem. It's the people around the president." That, that's, yeah, that's how the, that's how you defended yourself. That's the system. That's how the system works. You know, the people who are around the president see the other attack who please the president. Oh, watch ni kushikia ra ni kumfiche kidogo. <laughs> Na, okay, mtu wakifichwa na pelekangu wapi? <laughs> Maybe siku moja we can say something on the show ndio nijue. Yeah, Umeandika kwa lie was here. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sign of the wall. Yeah. I started something. Mm. I tried, uh, there's a hospital called Mbagadi. Mm -hmm. Mbagadi Hospital. Yes. I went to Mbagadi Hospital mm. to see someone in December. Nikena nikapata hosi, they have, uh, unona kama dirisha ya award yenye ikona wasi wa TB. Haina pain, haina is not pains, the glass nini, mm -hmm. haina kabisa. Yes. They are all rusted, they don't have even vitu za kujifunika. And uh, we, we, did, we, did, we did a series on the show, like mm. several, several times, several mm. times. We mentioned that several times. Na tukachanua watu because we gave up. Because after several weeks of doing it, we changed tact. Tukasema, uh, guys, to, to try as much as possible, not to fall sick. Mm. Ama don't go to the Mbagadi hospital before things are fixed. Imagine people don't care. But they, what I encourage, especially the young people now, I sympathize with anybody who is going to the public hospitals and doesn't have even an NHIF. If you don't have an NHIF in this country, you have signed your death warrant. You know, you're not going to get treatment. You know, at least if you have an NHIF, you are going to, the, the doctor is there going to, if they see that when you're a student, they are just going to ignore you. Because there's no money. Even the, the public hospitals, it's a death warrant you've signed. Nambaya, Naizi, umenem Kinyata, umenem Mama Lucy, Nini. Those are the worst ones. Afadal, we end in Bagathi. Boni Mwangi told us the same thing because we interviewed him on the same hospital. Mm. And, say, and he said, and he's in very, very polite words, he mm. said that don't get sick, you'll die. And, uh, <coughs> and you know, this is the young, and I'm encouraging the young people to go NHIF. So, Tano, Kwamwezi, NHIF, Chukwe Tukai. I actually started a program. I yes. pay NHIF for 30 families yes. every month. And uh, I say that people can volunteer, not, not, not in a particular structure, choose a family. Walipi at a company 500 bob a month. Mm. Because sadly, again, uh, the 500 bob. Not everyone can afford. No, 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 no. Some of the people are registered in NHIF, mm. but they cannot. To keep up with the payments. Mm. Which is, again, is another problem. Yeah, how, 
how how do Society. how can the government yes how wh why can't the government come up with universal health care yes. kama ya US where kila mtu ni lazima ukuwe na hiyo health cover but imekuwa balanced in such a way that the poor person ajaumia ule mse nini hata akiumia ataiba kidogo let me tell you the, all the problems in government everything if you see insecurity if you see uh, shida health nini it's corruption because if you try to reform the government health system, the biggest resistors are the big insurance companies or the big health, health providers who can bribe the government officials. Kamu kuna government minister, mwenye alikuwa ana own hospital, ya private, the biggest private hospital in this country. How is he going to make the public health <laughs> work? Na time yake ya meingia tu hivi, tukakuwa na scandal ya health. Yeah, so you know the problem is that it starts with corruption. If you solve corruption, country tanyoka tu. Country tanyoka. Kuna watu watakosa pesa, watasema kwamba ile pesa ya kila siku, mahaslas watakosa pesa ya kila siku ile ya, ya kupata raisi. Lakini, things will straighten. Okay, so we can conclude this conversation by saying that if the lifestyle audit was to work, yes. na everyone can account for the money they get, and yes. the rest of the money goes... Yes to the rightful place, yes. then we could probably save this country. Yes, you'll, you'll save this country as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it for the weekend edition. Lazimo, pick up your... It's very scary, but it's very nice. Tumaliza with a bang. Yes. Tumaliza the show with a bang. Ah, sawa. Tumaliza show, Basi. A special request from the... And with that, we end the show. That's the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kingori.